Okay, so section 2.5. Section 2.5 is all about um, how you transform graphs, as the, as the title says. So in other words, what makes graphs, like what do you do in an equation? You know, let's take a U-shape, for example. You know, what's the, the equation of y equals x squared? You all know all that already. That's a U-shape parabola. Right, and it's centered at the origin. If you just go y equals x squared, it'll be centered at the origin. Mm -hmm. But then, if you like put numbers, like if you go x squared minus seven, what does that do? If you go x minus seven squared, what does that kind of a seven do? What if you put the seven in the front times instead of added and subtracted? What does that do? And on and on you go. So the purpose of the next, the first hour, and then the second hour is going to be the other section. So in one hour, we want to try to gain as much as we can, and then in what you do in your homework in this section, in the ability to understand what happens to a graph when we add, or you know, this could be plus or you know, minus or whatever, add or subtract numbers outside the x squared or inside the x squared or multiplied on it, or even what if it's multiplied in here like this? Does that matter? Actually, that's different. Yeah. So, um, so what do all those things do? Well, first off, what what they do is the first thing you want to start to understand. So, so yeah. Let me let me one more word on the big picture. So this section, I, this is almost my favorite section in the course. It's really valuable, especially as you go into calculus, because what it's going to give you an ability to graph. If you if you get the concepts in this section, you'll be able to graph like thousands of things all of a sudden, just right away, have an idea of what the graph looks like. The way they do it, I think is really wise, the book presented it, is they have six basic graphs you memorize. Let me just write those out. You probably already know those, a lot of them anyway. So like we just showed the x squared, that's going to be, and not memorize, you get your three by five card for the exam, you know, but you'll know them cold by the end of the semester. We do them so often. So that's x squared, okay? And then, do you all know what, um, what does x cubed look like? Y equals x cubed. What's that one look like? Yeah, it's a snake. It goes low to high like that. Goes through. All these are going to go through the origin originally, and then we're going to move them and stuff like that. So that's x cubed, yeah. Now, what if instead of the two power or the three power, we turn that into a root? You know what I mean? Like, what if, what if you do the square root of x? Or what if you do the um, cube root of x? What does that do to the graphs? Do you know? Let's start with the square root. What does a square root graph look like? That one starts at the or the other direction and shoots off to the right. I always call it the firework. It's like it's just sitting right there, and it shoots off. It's the only one that stops on one side. Notice the square root doesn't go both ways. So, so um, now, what about the cube root? What about put a three in the hook? It does the side. Yeah, it takes the vertical, because the third power is the up and down snake. The uh, third root is a sideways snake. Again, going through the origin. So is this making sense so far? So notice, notice one, so uh, let me make a couple observations. Um, the, the powers, like the, the, the two power, the three power, they go up or down or sometimes both very fast, right? Two power goes up real fast, U-shape up. Third power here, that goes up and down real fast. Whereas the root guys are more sideways, aren't they? Whoa. The root graphs are much more sideways. Why? Well, because when you root numbers, they don't get big very fast. For example, if I was making a table and I went way out to... Um, I don't know, 100, y would equal the square root of 100, which is only 10. But if I made a table for this guy, and I went way out to 100, and y was x squared, that'd be 100 squared, that'd be 10,000. He's already up at 10,000. So obviously, when you do powers, things get real big real fast. And if you do roots, they don't get big very fast. So that's why the root graphs are mostly sideways, and the power graphs are mostly up and down. Okay. Now, uh, two more. The, um, you, you probably know this, the absolute value graph, absolute value of x, what does that one look like? That's the V, yeah. Instead of the U, it's the V. They're straight lines right through the origin. These are all origin-centered originally. Yeah, so it's a V graph, you know, kind of like the U graph, but it's straight lines because everything's positive, huh? Right? It would normally just be a straight line, but instead of going negative, it bounces back up because everything's positive for absolute value, as you know. Last one's the weirdest one. You may or may not know this one already. 1 over x. You know what that one looks like? 
Yeah, a couple of diagonal branches, one here and one there. It actually has asymptote lines, which we'll get a lot more into later. For now, I'll just throw them in there and not do much with them. Asymptote lines, you already know, I'm sure, are lines of approach, lines where the graph gets real close to guidelines, if you will. So anyway, that's the weirdest one. So there's the big six. So you want to put those six, put on your uh, three-by-five card for the exam. Uh, the exam we take, you'll see Tuesday when we take the uh, practice exam. Um, it's going to have part one, part two. I've already said that. Huh? Part one's no graphing calculator. You can use scientific calculator. That's fine. But no graphing. Case. You should bring both. You should bring both unless you want to do part one with nothing. So bring both. Part one, you can use a scientific, but no graphing because it'll be all these graphs. I want to make sure you can actually do these graphs by hand, not just type them into the calculator, but you can actually understand what the little movements and the things are going to be. But you can still use your 3 by 5 card. So you can put all these on your 3 by 5 card, and then for part one, you won't have to memorize them. You'll know, and then we'll do, you know, put numbers on them and make them twist or move or stretch or do weird things, and that's what you'll want to learn how to do. And then part, so that'll be like, um, is it eight questions or nine, seven, eight? I think it's eight. I think it's eight questions. You'll see it on Tuesday. It's going to practice exam, real exam, same thing. So I think it's eight questions on part one, no graphing calculator, pretty much all graphs, you know. And then you'll, when you finish that, I'll trade you or I'll have them um, on test day. I'll just have them up here on the desk, and you'll just come up and turn in part one, grab part two, which has the other 17 questions, 25 total, and eight and 17. Is that 25? Yeah. And um, take it back, and then you can use graphing calculator, and that's all the rest of the stuff we did in the class. So you'll want to know how to do these without a graphing calculator on that. So put those on your 3x5 card. Now let's go back and talk about the rules for what, well maybe I should just go forward, for what makes a graph move. Let's, let's, you know what the nicest one is, I think the square root of x? Let's, let's talk about him. If I don't write anything in the hook, it means 2, huh? It's understood to be 2. That's why we call it a square root, right? The square means 2, doesn't it? We don't call that x two'd. We call it x squared. Square is a word for two. Cube is a word for three. So square root, two root. Um, what's going to happen? Do you all know? Let, let's try it out. What's going to happen if I put it like a plus two outside of the root? Let's go well, here. Let me, let me do this in a little more organized fashion. Let me come down here. What's going to happen if I put a two outside a root and then... Let's also talk about what's going to happen if I put a 2 inside the root. Because they're different, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, at any time you want, you can totally just make x, y tables. But I'm trying to save you time and effort. You know, but, but you know, if you're ever unsure, I would encourage you to do so. You know, when you're taking the exam, you won't have time to do that for everything. But you know, the couple that you're kind of like, hmm, I don't know, then make a little table. You know, make a little x, y table. You can always do that. You know. But let me give you the rules to save you time and effort without that. Basically, the first fundamental to, to do this section, the first big idea you want to get straight is you, whenever you look at like a 2, like this 2 or that 2, you want to ask yourself, is that number going to have a sideways effect or an up-down kind of effect on the graph? I call it an X effector or a Y effector. Um, that's bad. I'm not an English teacher, huh? <laughs> Shouldn't it be the A? Isn't the A one the verb one? Anyway, whatever. You know what I mean. Whichever one it is. Uff, I think affects a verb. Anyway, whatever. So I'm using it as a verb. So the, whatever. The, X, the one that has an X effect, a sideways, sideways effect, or an up-down effect. Well, how do you know? It's simply this. When it's, it's an X effector, if X is inside, inside the whatever. <laughs> it's not very clear either. By the whatever, I mean, you know, whatever the function. If it's x squared, if the, if, the, um, if the number gets in there with the squared, as opposed to being outside of there. See the difference? See, that first one, the two got in the parentheses, it's, it's involved in squaring with the x, whereas the second one, it's outside of the x activity, right? So this would be an x guy. He's going to have a right-left kind of effect, whereas this guy's going to make an up-down kind of effect, because he's not in there with x. And that goes for any of those functions, whatever they are, third power, third root, second root, absolute value, one over x, whatever. If it's in there with x, if it gets into x's little world, then it's going to be a right-left kind of effect on the graph. It's going to move it or do something sideways. If it's outside of x's little world, it's going to have an up-down kind of effect. 
Does that make sense? That's the first fundamental divide, is is it an X effector or is it a Y effector? So tell me about it. Tell me about that two right there. Is that two going to have an up-down kind of effect or a right-left kind of effect? Yeah, it's an up-down. It's up-down because it is a Y effector. Right? Does that make sense? Now, where's this two? That's in there with X, right? That's in there. That's going to have a right-left kind of effect. And we'll talk about which one. We'll get particular, but I want to give you the big picture first, and we'll dive into the details. But first off, it's going to do something right-left because it is an X effector. Good like that? So far, so good. No, that should be an E. It's, it's bugging me. It's, it's an E, isn't it? Whatever. You don't care. I don't care. Well, I kind of, I obviously kind of care. All right. Anyway, whatever. Whatever it is. So I'll quit writing and just say it. So now, what kind of a right-left effect, or well, let's do this one first. What kind of an up-down effect? Well, what would you guess? Plus two? What do you think it's going to do? Up two, right? We'll grab that graph and go boop, boop, up two, right? So normally the graph is right here centered at the origin. It's going to go one, two. There you go. It's up at two. Right, exactly. No big deal at all. The whole graph just moves up two. That's what that two, that's what this does. Does that make sense? The plus two being a Y kind of thing, right? This two is outside of X's little world. It's up two. Now, careful here. More tricky. What do you think that plus 2 is going to do? Now, it's an X thing. We've already determined it's going to do a right, left, because it's in. It entered into X's little world, right? Okay. So what normally we would think plus 2 is right, left. Normally we would think plus 2 is right 2, wouldn't we? X. So here's the other major point. X, X things, right, left things, always do the opposite of what you would naturally expect. So it's going to actually go left, left, two. One, two. There it is. Whereas this one is up, two. So good so far with the first major lesson? Is that making sense? X. So keep that in your mind because it'll, it'll trick you. X always does the opposite. That, that, not just here. In a minute, we're going to start stretching, compressing, flipping, doing other things, and, and file away because it always is true. X always does the opposite of what you would naturally expect. Whereas Y does the normal. So Y always does what you'd think, you know, adding is up, subtracting is down, right? But X, always the opposite. Adding is left, actually. Subtracting is right, actually. And same thing when we come to compressing and stretching and other stuff, too. X, always opposite. Y, always normal. So let me just write that. X, opposite. X is always opposite. All right, we good so far? Feel free to speak up as we're going along. I okay. The effector is just an e. If you put it with an A, it's apparently a band. Okay. Well, thanks for checking. It is the E. All right. Um, so now, getting back to the normal square root of X. So now, what if we put um, a 2 right there? See the difference with that 2? Mm -hmm. what, what's different there about that 2 from the, ones, from the ones we did a minute ago? What's different from, like... It's in that. front of the X. Well, that's not a big deal, right? I could put the two in front of the X like that. That's still very different. It These guys are different. very different. So what's the fundamental difference? It's multiplied. By multiplied instead of added, subtracted. That's the big deal, right? This is times. So it doesn't matter front, back, whatever, whatever. We don't care about that. But we care about the relationship between the two and the root. Is it times? Is it a multiply relationship? Or is it an add subtract? Well, we know the adding. This, this would still just be up two, wouldn't it? That'd just be up two. Just take the square root graph, go up two. Because that's a y. That's not in x's little world. That's add two, go up two. Yeah, we did that already. But what's the multiply by two? It affects the line itself. Multiplying, dividing. Multiplying, dividing. Instead of adding, subtracting. Multiplying stretches graphs. Dividing compresses graphs instead of moving them. So let me go over here and write that. So if you go adding, subtracting moves a graph 
whereas multiply and dividing stretches or compresses the graph, but doesn't move it. It's still anchored where it was. So what does that mean? Oh, yeah, and, and, and this two, tell me, tell me, guys, this two, is that, is that going to be a sideways kind of thing or an up-down kind of thing? That two. Is he in, is, did he enter into X's world where, like they say, if you want to have compassion on somebody, you enter into their world. You think about their little world. You walk in their shoes, right? Did that too enter into X's little world? No. This, this would, you might, well, why not? This would be one who's entered into his world. We'll do that one in a minute. That's different, right? That, this one's going to have an X effect because he entered into X's little world. But this one remained outside of X's world. So this is a Y kind of thing. It's got up, down. This is going to be an up-down guy, isn't it? And what's he going to do? He's multiplying by two. He's going to stretch it twice as tall. He's just going to pull that graph up. Just pull it up faster. That's what he's going to do. Does that make sense? And now how about this one down here? Let me change the color for clarity. How about y equals root 2? How about that 2 right there? Now that's a 2. Let me make it a little bigger. That's a 2 times, he's an X, he entered into X's little world, so, he's mo so it's going to be a right-left kind of thing, huh? It's going to be right-left kind of thing instead of an up-down thing. And uh, you tell me, it's times, so what's it going to do? Multiply? It's going to make it longer. Oh, no, it's going to be smaller. What, remember what we learned about X? Ooh, have we already forgotten? X is opposite. Always. So it's going to actually do what? Compress sideways times two. It's going to push it together. Does that make sense? It's going to squish. Well, I can't really. And, and, and honestly, the compresses and stretches and stuff, they're hard to, I mean, it still looks kind of the same. You'd have to make a table. The multiple choice, they'd have different options. You'd grab, you'd make a table. But but so you would know from the table more than you can. I like it. I don't know how to draw something compressed. But um, it's there we go. Whatever. That's the best I can do. It actually ends up making it look taller because when you compress it, it actually. Anyway, wait, wait, no, tables. Taller. Tables will really show you the, the values. But you get the idea. So that makes sense. Remember, X always is because normally you think, well, multiply is, is, is makes it bigger. Well, yeah, but for X, it's opposite. So it compresses it. We good there? Why does it look the same, though, from the red graph that you did? Like, is it, is yeah. it, is it just going yeah. this way? Good, good question. Um, it should be on, on two, but then it'll back. Yeah, no, your question's really good. Let me answer it. Because uh, you see her question. It's a good question. She's saying, she's saying well, that, you know, this kind of you know, looks a lot like this one. I mean, you're, they, they're coming out the, kind of the same. Yeah, actually, let me, let me get really, really specific with this. See, let's, let's do it this way. What if I put a 2 out there? Now, that, what is that 2? That's a uh, um, vertical times 2 stretch, right? So it's going to make the graph twice as tall. Let's, let's, let's make a table to, to prove it. If x is 0, plug in here, 2 root x is going to be 2 root 0. That's just 0, huh? If x is 1, you're going to get... 2 root 1, which is 2 times 1, which is just 2. So make a little graph. 0, 0, over 1, up 2, and, you know, away you go. Great. Okay, so what? Well, now, let me show you something, guys. Let's compare it. Let me stick a 4 in there. Now, what is that 4? Now, this one's in X's world, so he's a sideways kind of thing, Right? And he's times, so he compresses, actually, because x is opposite. He compresses times 4 sideways, right? Whereas this is vertical times 2 stretch. Look at them for a second. They're really the same equation. What is the root of 4? If you simplified this baby, you'd, it'd become this. It'd become that. Do you see how... Certain, it, not the, uh, compressions are the same as stretches. Uh, as I should say sideways compressions have a vertical stretching effect. Remember, I, I mentioned it briefly. There's a proof of it. So if I did the table, it would be the same values, right? If I did zero here, root 4x, four, 4 times 0, it's going to be 0. If I did 1 here, root of 4 times 1, root of 4, 2. See? Same values. Same, same graph. 0, 0 over 1, up 2. They're, they're identical. Well, of course, they're the same equation. So, do you see the moral of the story there? 
sideways compressions are the same as vertical stretches because that's what they do. When you compress the ground, it goes up. It just means it gets up faster than it gets sideways. Either way you want to say that. It gets up faster than sideways or it's, yeah, right, you got it. I've said it enough. All right, good question. Yeah, so we start to see some interesting relationships between these. Okay, last thing we need to look at. Well, there's more, but last major thing is what's going to happen. Let's go back to the root of X. Again, the normal starts at the origin. Now, what if I stick a negative, negative in front like that? Let's do that one. And then, well, let's just, let's just do that right now. Well, no, let's put them, let's lay them all out. And then what if down here, I put the negative in there? Well, what are those going to do? All right, let's talk about this one, first off. It's really a negative 1. Timesing it, right, if you want. Mm -hmm. That's what it really is. It's negative 1 times the root. I keep messing up that negative. Um, so, negative 1 times the root. So, what's that negative 1 going to do, do you think? First, first thing, before you dive in, I know you're probably all thinking of flip, and you're totally right. But what kind of flip? Well, there's just two ways we could flip that graph. We could flip it sideways or we could flip it vertical. So you've got to be clear, is this guy a Y effect or an up-down kind of thing or a sideways kind of thing? Y. He's up-down. Yeah, he's Y. He's a Y effector. He's up-down because he's not in X's world. Whereas the other one, this one, he's an, he's an X kind of thing. He entered into X's little world. He's going to be a right-left flip, isn't he? And this other one is going to be an up-down flip. So, this is up-down flips. This will go down. And by the way, it doesn't move. It's still anchored at the origin, notice. It didn't move. It just flipped. And then the other one, again, will not move, but it'll just flip sideways. So it'll go left instead of right. Make sense? Negative one multipliers flip things. So, Multiply by negative 1 flips graphs, which I think you probably already knew. Does that make sense? So we got the major players now. Let me back up for just a minute. So again, adding, subtracting numbers moves the graph, makes it, you know, that it's no longer centered at the origin. Right, we're back here. Here we go. Right, see how these move? See how the, they're no longer, this one went up to, it's... The, 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 middle, the new middle moved, or left to, and then when we multiply, multiply and dividing, they stay anchored at zero, zero, they're just stretched or compressed when you multiply. And then finally, when you multiply by negative one, that's what flips graphs, either sideways or vertical. Now, I, let, one, one important question that might be in your mind, it would be if I, if I was in your shoes, I would be looking at that for a minute and go, wait a minute, Mr. That's illegal, isn't it? Didn't you tell us you can't put negatives in a root like that? Now you're telling us it's okay? Which one is it? I just say whatever, depending on the day. No, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm not a politician. Um, but sometimes it might sound like it. It sounds like I'm saying one thing and then I'm saying the other, depending on which crowd I'm talking to. No. Um, if you're wondering that, that's a good question, an important lesson to learn as you move forward into calculus. There's a difference between saying you can't put a negative number inside of a square root, which is true, and that's imaginary. And you can't put a negative x. No, you can put a negative x. That just means x itself can be things like negative 3, and then this other negative will make it back positive. No, let's graph it. Let me show you. Let me get more specific. Why is that okay? It's because it's, it's different. Again, one more time. It's different to put in a negative number than a negative x. Negative x, if you, to look at this and go, you just put something negative in there. I would say, no, I didn't. Go, yeah, yeah, that's a negative x. And I would say, what's x? Well, we don't know, right? So you don't know whether that's negative or positive. You see, x is a variable. Remember, x can change. You don't know what x is. To look at this guy and say he's negative is wrong. He's, ne he's the opposite of something. And I don't even know what that something is. So how do I know whether it's negative or positive? You with me? You want to think of negative x very different than like negative 3. Yeah, negative 3, that's negative. That, that can't vary. That, that's done. That's negative 3. That's negative. But this is a variable. It depends what x is. It's not always negative, right? Let, 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 me, I, let me make the table. Yeah, I'm just kept talking. I should make the table. So let's make the table. So, for example, if you put in 0, what are you going to get? Well, that's just square root of you know, negative 0. That's just 0, right? There's no such thing as negative 0. Uh, well, I mean, there is. It's just 0. Put in 1, y equals square root of 8. Now, that's not okay. I'll just say no. It's imaginary, right? 
imaginary. Calculus says, hey, I can't do that, or two, or any, anything else positive. There's, those are all no way. But you can put in negative one because the formula has a negative and you're plugging in negative one. So that's the square root of one, which is just positive one. That's okay. You can put in other negatives. You can put it, I'll put a nice one like negative four because that's rootable. Right? That would be negative negative four, which is the square root of four, which is two. That's okay. So you see, see what that means? So then let's, let's see it on the graph. Zero, zero, right? Still centered at the origin. Um, over one, no. <laughs> over two, no. I'll put that down. That's so important. It's just saying I don't go there. Back one, up one. Back, well, four. I'm out of room. Up two. So you see what he's doing. Sure enough, just like we predicted. He's flipped to the left, isn't he? Like we said, that flips it to the left. It's the truth. All right. Good. All right. All kinds of important stuff. Let's, so let's get, let's get, we better get doing the homework now. So there's all the theory. Let's dive into the homework. All right, here we go. So there's um, a U-shape been turned, two things have been done to it. It's been turned upside down and it's been moved up. What is that? Six? Seven? Oh, seven. Obviously, they're all seven. So seven. So it's been moved up seven, flipped, flipped vertically, you know, upside down. What will do that to an equation? If you take y equals x squared, what do you got to do to the equation? First off, how do you move it up 7? What's going to move it up 7? 7. Well, yeah, add 7. Yeah, add seven. Man, just pop it outside of x, not in the parentheses, right? Forget about these parentheses ones, no way. Right? Not, not like that. It's not, why, why would this not be right? Because that's a sideways thing, huh? That 7 entered into x's little world with compassion. He's in there on x. That's a sideways effect. No, 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 no. We're not talking about sideways effect. This is an up-down thing, right? So that's outside of the parenthesis, outside of X's little world, okay? So that's good. Um, and now what's going to make the flip vertical thing? Negative. negative one. So negative X squared, like that. So where is that, baby? Oh, yeah, it's already, it's already, we already got the answer. There it is. Good? Making sense so far? So that's how it'll be on the test. Right? Part one, no graphing calculator, graphs, you, you grab the equation. If you're unsure, that's what I'm saying. If you're sure, great, grab it. If you're unsure, you can, if you think, I'm not sure, is that really it? You can always make a table, you know, plug in some values, make sure they're really coming out to be that picture. You can always check that. Good so far? Well, let's dive into the homework more and more. Okay, so this is number two. And, um, all right, let me give you, well, I've already got the answer, huh? Don't look at the answer. Um, so do you see why that is? Right, that's absolute value of x. It's been turned upside down again. So that'll be the negative. And then what, what has it been moved? It, the anchor, the center is moved. It's off the origin. It's left one. What makes left one? Plus one, because remember, x is opposite. So it's always easy when you're looking at the answer. But you okay with that? That makes sense. X is opposite on that. All right. I'll keep moving. You stop me. All right. So they want you to take on this question, number seven here. They want you to take Y equals root X, and they want you to go right five. So, so they, there's no pictures. They just want you to mess with the equation. So go ahead and write a, type in a new equation, or for your paper, write a new equation that would make that thing go right five. So you can write that. We good? What's it gonna be? Is it gonna be is it gonna be in the root like that? Or is it gonna be outside the root? It's gonna be in the root, because it's gotta have compassion, it's gotta enter into X's little world, because it's a right left kind of thing, gotta be with X. Now is it is it like that? No. Because X is Opposite, so it's there. There, you go. there it is. We all good? Good so far? Right five. <laughs> this can be a little tricky, especially because of the language. Um, when they say reflect about the y axis, think with me for a second. Here's the y axis. It's that one. So if you reflect something about the y axis, it's actually a sideways jump. This means sideways X reflection, X flip, let's say. So it's confusing because they're saying Y, but it's actually an X flip. It's reverse. 
Let me hold on. That fools a lot of people, and I don't want it to. Is that making sense for you? You see what we're saying? They're going to use that language all the time. They're going to say, reflect about the Y. That means the Y axis. That means the Y axis is like a mirror, and you're reflecting to the other side of the Y axis, which actually means you're flipping sideways, huh? Does that make sense? So they're saying, take this graph, take X cubed plus 4, and reflect, or flip, let's just say flip, I don't want to write there, I don't want to use their language, flip sideways, flip X. So make an X flip, okay? So you know it's going to be negative 1 somewhere. So where do I put the negative 1? In with the X, exactly like that. Does that make sense? I put it in there with the X, right? Because it's an X thing, right? It's got to enter into X's little world. It can't be separate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So Y equals root X. So go ahead and do a horizontal stretch factor of 7. Give you a second. <clears throat> okay, so what, what makes graphs stretch or compress or whatever? What does that? And Multiply and divide. Not, not adding, subtracting, right? Adding, subtracting moves them. Multiply, dividing, stretches, compresses. So this is some kind of multiply or divide. Good with that first off, okay? It's horizontal, so that means it's an X. It's a sideways. So that means it's got to enter into X's little world. In other words, it's not, it's not out here, right? That would be a Y. That would be a vertical stretch. You with me? So it's got to enter in. So is it like that? No. Is that right right there? No. Why is that not right? Because that makes it shrink because X is opposite. Because X is opposite. Yeah, you always got to remember X is opposite. So it's not going to do that. It's not going to multiply by 7. What's it going to do? Like that. That's correct now. Does that make sense? I got to make that root a little bigger. The whole thing's in the root. See? Make sense? Dividing actually is going to stretch. Remember, X is opposite. So for X, multiplying compresses, dividing stretches. It's opposite. Is that good? Because they said it was stretched. So stretched means divide for X, doesn't it? Good? We all happy? Mm -hmm. Stop me if you want to talk about it. Okay. okay. So Y equals square root of X. They want us to go through three steps building on the last step every time, not going back to the beginning. It's not three separate problems. It's one problem in three parts, building, building, building. So take this equation and first, step one, shift it down three. So let me let you go ahead and do that. So what's going to make it go down three? A minus 3 outside like that. Good so far? Because mm -hmm. that's a Y. It's outside of X's little world. And it's minus 3. Up, down, 3. Okay, next, number 2. Reflect about the X axis. So, let me, let me let you do that. Give you a second on that. Yeah, you know what? I better do that one with you. This, this, the, here, here's the trick. Um, this one, this one here, this is going to be tricky. So here's the x-axis. Okay, so to reflect about the x-axis is a y flip, actually, isn't it? And the next one, part three, will be an x flip, right? Remember, it's vice versa. To, to the x-axis is your mirror to reflect about the x-axis to go across the x-axis like it's a mirror. Is you know it's, it's like you're grabbing the x-axis like it's a rotisserie barbecue or something, and you're you're turning it, right? That's what they're saying. So it's a vertical kind of flip. It's really a y flip here on number two. It's going to be a y flip. Okay, great, got it. So what? 
Well, what does that mean when you do a Y flip? What's it going to actually do? Well, here's, here's the trick. You might think, you might think, well, let me just put the negative out there. That's not right, actually. It's something I haven't told you yet. Um, when you do a Y flip, you, um, you, you're, you're probably thinking, well, you do the outside. You, you're right. You do the outside. And, and that's the outside. That's part of the outside. you got to do the whole thing. Because Y equals this whole thing. Y is this whole thing. So you got to do the minus on the whole thing which actually ends up being minus root x plus 3. Does that make sense? you got to do the whole thing. Whenever you do a y, whenever you do something to y, it's to all of y, right? And y equals all of this, not just the root x part, right? Does that make sense? y equals that whole right side. So when you apply a negative to the front of y, you're applying it to the whole thing, so it distributes. So this is the actual answer for part two. Good so far? Mm -hmm. A little trickery there. Then part three is going to be easier. Part three is more normal. So part three is reflect about the y. So now we're doing the y-axis. And if you jump across the y-axis, that's an x-flip. Sideways kind of thing, right? So an x-flip, part three. How do I take this equation and now do an x-flip? Well, you just do a negative on the x, huh? So the rest, or let's do this one, this one. So do now put negative in on the x as well. So there's our final answer. Why'd you put a plus three? We good? This minus distributed back on part two, right? So there's our answer. Everybody good with all that? Is that making sense? So it's a little tricky. That that little maneuver tricks people a lot of times. So when you do something outside of Y, it's all of Y, not just part of Y. Okay. Try that one. Just start with Y equals root X. Part one, reflect about the X axis, which is actually going to have what effect? It's a Y flip, right? Because if you flip about the X axis... You did a Y flip. So part one, do a Y flip. Then part two, shift down two. And part three, shift right three. All right, five. Okay, so a Y flip puts a negative outside of all of Y, and that's so far just the root of X. Right? No big deal here. Good so far? Negative's on the outside because of Y. It's not in the root. It's not an X. Step number two. We do uh, down two. What's down two going to do? Well, minus two. Outside of the root again. It's a Y thing. Good so far? And then right, right five for step number three. Right five. What's right five going to do? To the equation, negative 5 in the root. Opposite. Remember, x is opposite. And we're done. Negative 5 in the root. Good? Getting the hang of all this? Mm -hmm. So the power of this kind of thing is you could look at this kind of an equation, pretty complex, and know, oh, it's just square root graph. It's been flipped. It's been flipped upside down. And it's down to right 3. Or five, sorry. My five, my three. This doesn't look like five. Down two, right five. You just go, oh, that's down two. That's actually right five, because opposite, and that negative means been flipped. So you could quickly know about the graph. You go, oh, the graph is instead of going up like that, it's going down, and it's down two, right five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's right here, going down like that. You know that quick about the graph. That's the power of all these techniques put together. Okay but we really are. We've done almost all the concepts. So now they're going to say, hey, moving a graph is just moving a bunch of points, right? That's what a graph is, is zillions of points. So, um, so now they're going to say, okay, let's just move one point at a time. What if you just take 8, 1? Same concept, no, nothing different. They're just doing it with points now. So just take the point 8, 1, which is an X and a Y. They're just saying, hey, that's some point on a graph. 
uh, f of x. You know, it's on the graph of f of x, and um, we're gonna we're gonna say, well, what's gonna happen if you go negative x? F of negative x. Well, they're just putting a negative on the x, so you just put a negative on the x value. That's it. It's just gonna switch, jump the x value. No big deal there. That good. Nothing amazing or surprising there. So they're saying, okay, negative 3, 7 is a point on the graph. What's going to happen if you go negative 2 multiplied to the front of f of x? Where is this point, negative 3, 7, going to jump to when you do this to your equation? Let me give you a second. Think about that negative 2. Ask yourself, um, is it, it going to affect the x-coordinate or is it going to affect the y-coordinate? This guy, this negative 2, this times... Negative 2, is it timesing x or timesing y? Is it in there with x? No, so it's y. Times negative 2 on y. So you just take the y value, and you go times negative 2. So it's the x doesn't change at all. There we go. Does that make sense? So they're just having you identify if something is in the parentheses with x, it's going to affect the x coordinate only. If it's outside, it's going to affect the y coordinate only. Good so far? Just moving points. That's where that particular point on a graph would jump to. Okay, so this time they're basically giving me two x values. This is x negative 6, I'm oh, sorry, x negative 9 and x negative 6 uh, because they're both x intercepts. Neither one are y values, those are both x values. Okay, so it says, all right, for f of x. Now, what if we do f of x plus 4? That's their first question x plus 4. So they're adding 4 to x. Remember, x always does the opposite. So what is that going to do to each of those x coordinates? It's going to subtract 4. So that's how I got negative 13 and negative 10. Does that make sense? Whenever you mess with an equation, the x part of the equation, it has the opposite effect on the graph, thus on all the points. Right? Good so far? Part two. Now, again, going you, you, this one is not building. You always go back to the beginning every time. So now, what, what if we go f of x minus 8? Well, uh, again, that's opposite. So what's it going to do to the x-coordinates this time? It's going to add 8. So I go back to what they already were. Negative 9. And negative 6, and this time it's going to add 8, add 8, negative 1, and plus 2. That's how I got those. Good so far. How, how do I know it's going back to the beginning every time? Because every time you're starting off with f of x again, right? And then we do f of x plus 4, and then we do f of x minus 8, right? This, this did not use the x plus 4 and then do more to it. It's just original f of x, now do f of x minus 8. Next one. 5 times f of x. 5 times f of x. That 5, is that 5 an x effector or a y effector? It's a y. It's not in there with x. It's going to change y values. What are these guys? So they won't change. Hence, they don't change. Make sense? They're, they're, they're giving you a curveball there. Kind of trying to trick you, changing the pace up. Finally, f of negative x, that's just going to switch the signs on the x values, huh? No big deal. So negative 9 becomes positive 9, negative 6 becomes plus 6, we're done. Good? Walking through that one? They're just giving us from every angle, huh, what messing with the equation does, the points and graphs and x values and y values. It's hard to skip anything, but then I better get to the hard ones. Um, yeah, so, so because it says interval, we know these are both x values, not an xy, right? X value, interval means a chunk on the x-axis. It means on the x-axis from 3, so there's some kind of graph, whatever, blah, 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 whatever. I don't even know what it looks like. But they're saying from 3 to 6 on the graph f of x, tell us about what happens, okay? Over what interval? 
the, and they say, okay, this graph right here, they're saying it's increasing. On, so so we, don't, we don't care what they're saying. Basically, all, all you're doing is you're saying x plus 7. What is f of x plus 7? Well, it's adding 7 to the x values, but opposite. Opposite means minus 7 on the x's. So you just take those two x's and you subtract 7 from both of them. Negative 4, negative 1. They're both x's. It's just like the last problem. They're both I don't care if they're putting me in parentheses with a comma. Whatever. They're two x numbers. Do the same thing. Make sense? All the rest the same. Can I skip the rest of that one? So other graphs that we, the big six, you know, some of the other ones. So this, this is basically one over, whoops, here we go. This is basically the one over x graph, but they put an 8 down there with x, huh? That entered x's world, that, that's times 8, that's going to have a compression effect. Because x does opposite, it's going to compress x 8-fold. Right? Because that's an X effector. He entered into X's little world. And, um, and he's a times. X is opposite. It compresses. So it's going to take the normal graph and just squish it together eightfold. So it's going to be that, isn't it? It's not C where they're all separated. It's B where they're all squished together. Right? Yeah, sure. So... Um, Okay, y equals minus x cubed plus 3. So it's the x cubed graph. It's the snake. What does that uh, plus 3 do? Up 3. What does that minus do? Flip vertically. Right, because that minus is outside of x. It's not like this. That'd be an x effector. You with me? It's not like that. So you take the Q, so which one is right then? A vertical flip moved up three. D. D. Everybody see that? See, they turned it upside down. Because nor the normal one goes like this. So if you flip it upside down, it's going to go like this, isn't it? So this is minus X cubed. And then you add three, it moves up three. We good? And all that questions. And I'm moving fast. I want to. I'm just worried about the next section. It's kind of meaty, too. I want to get there. So, um, square root of negative x. Yeah, this is down to, bless you. And this is uh, sideways, sideways flip, right? That's an x flip. So, you take the u shape, and you, I'm not the u shape, the square root firework graph goes sideways, and then go down, too. So, it's right here. Which one is that? Oh, it looks like that one, I guess. B. Good? Same thing. These last five are the same concepts. They're just going to make up other graphs. So they're just going to make up this whatever graph it is. And they're going to say, okay, okay, let's take this graph and let's do f of x plus 5. Too. What's that going to do? f of x plus 5? x has opposite. So the plus inside the x is actually left. Take that whole graph. Goes. So I would, just, I would just focus on one point, like this center point here. We'll go left 5. Is this him here? I think that's him there. Yeah. There we go. That's not too bad, right? We good? Graph and throw absolute values around it. So, so this is f of x, and they're going to say, now over here we want you to do absolute value of f of x. We want to take this and throw absolute value bars around it. What does that do? That means this part, which is going negative, will flip up. Does that make sense? Because that's what absolute value means. Can't be negative. Y cannot be negative. Right? You can plug in negative X's, that's fine. But Y will have to come. The heights will have to be positive. Does that make sense? I'll just flip that up. So which one's that? This one? Is that good? Getting the hang of how All right. this is a this is a hard one. All right, so um, we take the point negative 8, 5, and they're going to say, okay, uh, part A. Part A, we want um, Y equals G of X plus 2 minus 6. That's not too bad. So, okay, so what's that? We're gonna, so we're going to take, this is, uh, this is a point on a graph, so that means this is X, Y. They're not both X's, it's X, Y, it's a point, right? It's not an interval, it's a point. So it's x, y, not x, x, right? We good? So um, now, what is this plus 2 going to do to x? 
minus 2 on x, right? x is opposite. What's that minus 6? It's just minus 6 on y. Good? So I just do literally that. I just take this and I go minus 2 on the x, minus 6 on the y. What is that going to be? Minus 10. And what's that? Minus 1. So the point minus 8, 5 moves, jumps to negative 10, negative 1. Because of this, it actually subtracts 2 to the x right there. And this subtracts 6 from the y. And there's the new point that it jumps to. Good for part A? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Part B uh, is the hard one. Okay, so they're going to say negative 4 g of x minus 3 plus 5. Same thing, we're going to start over again. We're going to go back and start over again with um, minus 8, 5. <clears throat> How do I know? Well, because we're starting with g of x every time, right? y equals g of x, the original point, negative 8, 5 on g of x. This time we're doing a bunch of stuff to g of x. Here we go. What is the minus? You might, you might think it's the same, but it's actually got a trick. What's the minus 3 going to do to the x? Add 3, 8. It'll add 3, because x is always opposite, right? That, that part's normal. Add 3 to x. Now, here's the trick part. What's going to happen with What's that plus 5 going to do? Add 5. Add 5 to y. That's no big deal. And what's, and what's this minus 4 going to do? That minus 4 is times, isn't it? Now subtract it. It's times. So is it a y thing or an x thing? It's a y thing. It's, a y thing. it's not in the parentheses. It's outside. It's a y thing. So, so what's the big deal? It's just minus 4 times your y. Yeah, you're, that's true. That's true. But what order? That's the trick. Do you, add, do you take this y value and first add 5, make it 10, then multiply by negative 4. That would be negative 40. Let's do that. Maybe that's right. Add 5, you get 10, and then go times negative 4. You get negative 40. Is that the new y value? The, the new x value is certainly negative 5. That's no mystery there. Or, instead, do you uh, first multiply? Do you take the y value 5 and first multiply by negative 4, get negative 20, then add the 5? That would be negative 15. That's a very different y value. Ah, the order matters, doesn't it? You guys, you guys see the problem first off? Do you see the mystery that you maybe didn't see before? What's the order? When you're doing two things on y, both multiplying and adding, subtracting, or two things on x, doesn't matter either way. If you're doing two things on one letter, you got to know what order is right. Well, you got three options you could guess. <laughs> but you don't want to do that on the, on the test. So what order is right? See, I'm making this a big story. I don't got time for this. This is where you need to say, Mr. Heron, there's another section. Just remind me because I'm out of control with time. I just want to talk about the whole thing. Um, simply put, real quick, you just look what happens to the equation. It's tricky. It's, it's pretty tricky. Look what happens to the equation. You can tell which one's the right order. I don't even know right now off the top of my head. Let's take the equation. G of x, y equals g of x. Try, try, forget about the x minus 3. Oh, well, I mean, I'll put that in. Who cares? That's not really the issue. The issue is, what about the time minus 4 and what about the plus 5? Well, if I, if I did the add 5 first, okay, that's going to be wrong. If I did the add 5 first, that's not the right way to do it. How do I know? Because look what would happen to the equation. If I added 5 first, that's fine. What's the big deal? Add 5 first. Okay, great. Now, multiply by negative 4. When I multiply by negative 4, what do I got to do? Multiply all of this by negative 4, and what will that become? Negative 20. Is that really what they gave me? No. no. So that's the wrong order. See that? Mm -hmm. So you don't add 5 first. No. Instead, let me prove to you the other one's correct. Instead, if you um, first... Take, take the g of x. I don't, again, the x minus 3, that's not the issue. That's just there. That's good and fine. If you first multiply by negative 4, all you got is that negative 4. Right? There's nothing else there right now. So that's fine. And then add the 5. That's just fine. That'll get you exactly to the equation they gave me. So that's the right order. So you first multiply by the negative 4, then add the 5. So this is wrong. You don't add the 5 first. You first multiply by negative 4, which would be negative 20. Then add the 5. The negative 15 is the correct new y value. The x value is negative 5.
There it is. It's the point negative 5, negative 15. That's where the point will move. All right. I got to move on. That's, that's not easy. 